Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today on this video, I wanted to go ahead and help you guys out with a beginner guide for building your characters in Grimdon. Now this is specifically for brand new players, people who have literally no idea of the game. I want to get you started so you don't feel that you have to follow a guide. Uh, I myself am a person who creates a lot of guides for games in general, but I really like when people take initiative and take their first steps on just basics and learning of the game, right? And of course, if you don't understand it from there or you get lost, feel free to follow a guide, but just so you can get that first foot out, right? So, the first thing to note about Grimdon is that it is a multi-class system. You get your first class at level 1, and you get your second class at level 10. Now, your classes can be respect as many times as you'd like with very little penalty. Sorry, the classes itself cannot be respect, but say say you put 70 points into Arcanus right here, 20 points, and you put, you know, like a point here, and you do this, and you go here, and you test out this, and you realize, well, I like this a lot, but oh no, it's shit. You can actually just respect this in the game. It just costs a few bits. It may seem expensive at first. It's really not. I think expen it gets expensive after you've respect like... 400 total points so you don't really have to worry about this so the main thing i want to talk about here is building your character so the first thing to note is putting in base stats of characters is really actually not that bad a lot of people will say not to do this but putting in base stats for the character which is the mastery boosts your health and your total stats overall it's not bad because it's a nice boost of health right um, the way this mastery works is uh, it's kind of logical, right? So soldier, which is kind of like up in your face class, has high physique scaling and high health. Arcanist, which is a caster, is the opposite. It's more spirit and energy related. So um, the next thing to note is ideally you want to focus on one to two primary skills, right? So let's say we're playing a soldier and you decide you want to play your skill as F Force Wave is going to be your main build, right? You got to pick a skill. That's just how it is with every game. So you pick Force Wave. So you're going to go ahead and max it out. Of course, if you're just playing now and you're like one-shotting everything, don't put more points than you need to. A lot of the times, I believe we call these transmuters. Um, well, actually, this would be the transmuter. This would be like, I guess, I don't know what they call it. But typically, you will put points into the passives because if you notice, it's scaling the damage up, but it's not increasing the mana cost. Now, that's not the case for everything, but it's just one thing to take note of just to make your leveling a little bit easier. So after you've decided you want to play Force Wave, right? You try to see if there's any, any synergy between your two classes, right? So say in this instance... Force Wave is purely weapon damage based, and for the most part, Arcanus is a caster, right? So it, it may not make the most sense at the beginning. But then all of a sudden you pick up Tremor, right? Or actually, is it Force Wave or is it is it Cadence? It's Cadence, actually. Cadence, for example, has full elemental conversion. But anyway, that's okay, right? So say you want to play Force Wave, and you really want to use Arcanus because, you know, for roleplay reasons, or in general, you just want to play the build you want to play. So now we move to the next step, right? One other thing to note is that you can only pick one ultimate buff between all the classes. So even if you have 50 points in Soldier and 50 points in Arcanist, you can only get one of these exclusive buffs. Now, some classes do have different skills like Devastation. Devastation is not an ultimate buff, so you could have like, for example, you could pick um, Menhir's Bulwark and you could still get Devastation. The next part that I'm going to tell you about is the skill modifiers. Now, this is something a lot of people don't cover, and I can't for the life of me understand why, because this is where Grim Dawn separates itself from other games. So, we decided we were going to play what skill? We decided we were going to play Force Wave. So now, on this website, I'm basically on GrimTools.com. All you do is when you go to the Grim Tools uh, home website, you're going to go down here and look for item skill modifiers, and you're just going to click this number. So, when you click this number... We are now going to look at Force Wave. So I'm going to click Force Wave, which is right here. There are 23 different things for Force Wave. Now, what I just clicked, uh, a lot of this stuff is going to be for mid to end game, but a lot of this stuff can be target farmed. What target farming means is um, you can find a specific monster that will drop what you're looking for, kill them multiple times until you get it, and then move on and be happy. Now, there are two types of target farming. There are target farming for sets, which is a lot more rare, and we're not really going to talk about that. And there are target farming for monster infrequence. A monster infrequent is usually typically a green, or, you know, can be whatever. But for the most part, what it means is, is that when it drops, it automatically drops with these preset stats and then rolls the other set of stats. 
which is very good if you're making a skill your main, like your main attack, right? So for example, this is called a mutant bludgeon. You can find it from these following mobs and you'll see what it does. It adds extra range to force wave and reduces the internal cooldown of the skill, which is great because that stacks with CDR. Now, another thing to note is after you've decided the MI you want to get, there are some other really, really important things. And those important things is finding something that is build enabling for you. So if you look at this, this is minus recharge to force wave, 500% internal trauma damage and increased duration of a force wave. Now it's got other stuff as well, but if you look, this is building towards an internal trauma uh, set up for force wave. If we were to scroll down here, this is an electrocution force wave. Literally, you get 100% of your physical converted to lightning. That means before you even make your build, if this is your goal to get, and remember, a lot of helmet items are actually blueprints that you can farm and just craft. Um, you could play this with a completely different class because all you need is soldier and now you can go full lightning, right? Uh, these gloves, for example, add fire damage with full fire conversion. And most skills in the game have so many different types of these things that completely change how the skill is played. And the reason why I bring this up is because this is where the customization of the game truly enters, right? This is where you get to make the character that you want to make. And it may take you a while, like I said, to get these. However, if it's a set bonus item, we didn't talk about this earlier, set items, if you find one, can be transmuted in the Forgotten Gods content. Well, that's not really for this video, but just to let you guys know, there are multiple ways of acquiring an item, even if it cannot be just acquired from one boss. So, that being said, you found an item you're building around, you found the skill you're building around, what do you do next? So, next up, if we go back here, you'll notice that there are a lot of stat points that you can enable. I don't actually know how to get to the stat points on here, but it doesn't really matter. You have three stats. You've got physique, you've got cunning, you've got spirit. Physique is the most defensive stat. Cunning is going to be offensive in terms of crit. It basically boosts your offensive ability, which is like your crit, your base crit damage, your crit chance, and your accuracy. That includes spells as well. And then you have spirit, which is your energy regen uh, and your like uh, your spell damage scaling. Now, one thing to note about it is that these stats here. Thank you, boys. Uh, each one of these now gives you HP. Previously, before this expansion was a thing, only physique gave you health. Now all of them give you health. So that's good to know. Not as strong as physique, but it's very good. In terms of how you should allocate your stats, it is totally okay to save a lot of your stat points and just put stat points in as you get pieces of gear that are huge upgrades for you. Because nobody, well, some people do, but I'm the kind of guy who wants to like jump into a game blind with a little bit of direction of where I'm going, but I don't want to spoil everything for myself, right? It is also important to note that if you have the Ashes of Malmouth expansion, there are three respec stat po uh, three stat respec potions you can get, one in each difficulty, and by farming Nemesis bosses, you can get as many as you'd like. So that's one thing that's really cool as well. You can also respec your skills, like I said. So, next step into the game. Um, the next step is basically going to be your devotions. And your devotions is a very, very, very big part in the game. So let's go ahead and jump to the devotions real fast. In the devotions, uh, yours is probably not going to look like this. Mine is bugged and shows all of them for some unknown reason. That's why I used the offline calculator in the previous video I showed. But the way devotions work is we're not going to break down this too crazy. I do have a separate devotion video you can check out, but I'm just going to put you in a simple direction. Your goal is to find a nice devotion to set for your main skill. So we are playing Force Wave, right? What kind of Force Wave were we playing? I don't really remember. Let's just say we're playing Physical Force Wave. So you can type in here, Physical, and you'll see a lot of things are going to highlight that are physical. Ideally, you're going to look for the outer ones as your main ones, right? So let's take a look at this guy up here. So this is a big boy devotion. Why? Because it's on the outer side of the devotions. So all the little points here are passives on devotions. The red circle things here are basically things that you would attach to your skill. So this is called Fist of Fire. 20% chance when hit, meaning that we have to get hit, which means this would not actually get supported with our Force Wave. This would get supported with any of our buffs that have 100% uptime because it's just always going to happen then, right? So if you look and you click it, you can tell we can't put our skill with it because as I said, it's only with a buff. So let's look for another physical devotion proc. Let's see, what's over here? This is also when hits. 
Let's just keep scrolling down. What is this? Okay, here, here's one. Here's an example of one. Not anything crazy, but this is chance on attack, which means I could now click force wave and socket it. Now, the interesting thing is it says 20% chance on attack. However, if your skill has a cooldown, it will actually have the percentage go up to compensate for the cooldown to make it feel more smooth. Now you have your regular force wave skill that maybe has a transmuter to something else that on top of it has a chance of proccing a devotion. Now devotion is really nice because you can use it for a variety of things. Mainly, if you lack AOE, maybe you get, you know, you have a single target skill, you get AOE on the devotion tree, vice versa, flip it around. Maybe your build is really good, but you just don't have any way of shredding targets, you know, resistance or offense ability or defensive ability, you turn to the devotion tree. So that's that's really the main thing of the devotions, and you will be respecting this a lot, but just do what I said at the beginning and just aim for one devotion as your goal. So at least you have a direction of where to go towards, and then you can kind of play around and do whatever you want. Now, one small tip I'm going to give you if you're following a guide, because it's probably not going to explain this, is snapshotting your devotions. So let's use a quick example. Hawk. Say I want to get Hawk. Hawk requires one green. So what do we do? We get our devotion. We get one green. We now have the ability to get Hawk. Because Hawk's constellation bonus gives three green, we can put one, two, three, and we now can actually remove this point here because we have four green. So click remove right? You normally would not be able to do that. So that is why I say you're going to be respecting a lot in your devotions because you're going to use the starting node to unlock a devotion. And then you're going to use that devotion to unlock another devotion. And then you're going to use that devotion to unlock another. And maybe because you got those two later devotions, you can now respec Hawk. And you're basically going to be jumping and bouncing around your, your devotion tree the whole way until you can acquire what it is that you would like. Now, if you want an example of how crazy you can get with devotions on my summoner, I have three gigantic devotions. I've got Tree of Life, Ishtok the Spring Maiden, Light of Empyrean, and I still have the ability to come down here and acquire Murmur, which is basically my, uh, my resistance shred. So there's so much customization that you can acquire on here. It's, it's so amazing. The last thing I want to tell you guys about is the following. Now, in Grimdon, there are a lot of resistances and stats you're going to try to balance and play around, and I get it. It's a lot to take in at once, right? You've got basically 10 primary resistance types. Well, actually nine because not stun. You've got piercing, poison and acid, lightning, cold, fire, bleeding, vitality, aether, and chaos. We're not talking about secondary or third stats, just the basics right now. So my recommendation to you is worry about these four as your main stats while progressing through normal. You don't have to have them capped, but make it a priority when you're in Elite, which is the next difficulty, to try to cap these as much as you can. 80 is going to be your baseline cap. Now, as you play through the game, you're going to be unlocking reputation with many of the various uh, reputation player or people. When you uh, unlock reputation, you're going to unlock things called comp uh, augments. Augments when you are revered, which is the highest state, is where you will then have the ability to max your resistances very, very easily. So if you look, for example, this is like a weak augment. This is 12 all resistance on rings. So if I put 12, 12, and 12, that's 36% all resistance just for my accessories while still giving pet bonus. <clears throat> so this is something you want to work towards. It's okay if you're dying and etc. and shit is happening and the game is real difficult. Just remember, if you farm reputation, you can acquire these. You also can get pretty decent gear for beginners and starters uh, from, from the shops as well. And don't forget that there's recipes. Anyway, that's pretty much all that I can tell you and all the advice I can give you. Uh, you know, I hope you guys can jump in the game yourself and get things going. I myself was very happy because I actually was telling myself... Oh, I want to play another summoner, but I don't want to play your standard summoner. I don't want to play a cultist because I've played it so many times as summoners. And I don't want to use skeletons <clears throat> because I've played skeleton summoner before. So now I'm actually playing a blight fiend summoner. Uh, normally you can only have one blight fiend. However, with my set that I'm using, which is called goals, I have the ability to acquire two blight fiends and I get a tyrannosaurus rex that you can see right over here. And it's a full poison and acid summoner, which is really, really cool. So I was happy to get this character going, and uh, you guys will see some more content of it if you watch the streams. But anyway, like I said, that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. 
Remember, if you like the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can also attach components on your gear, just like you can attach augments, which are two separate things. This is also the area where you're going to be doing all of your respecting in the beginning. You can find the dude right here. If you have unlocked Ugdenbog, which is the uh, later on area, like way up there in the expansion, then that character will move to Coven's Refuge. And then the last thing is down at the inventor over here, it's quest locked, but once you do act one, you'll unlock it. This is where you can remove your components off of your gear. But anyway, hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves and I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Take care, everybody.